in sports, if players aren't getting along, winning can cover some things up, but eventually tensions will surface. This group, they don't take themselves too seriously. They like to play at a high level. Bus rides, dance lines, all of it. As far as Wiper Lake's concerned, records go out the window when they take the floor. Emma Berglund, the player to watch for Matamidi, entering this game, leads the team in kills. Based on most recent data available, 58 kills, 100 hitting percentage. There's a look at Wiper Lake's head coach, Mike Alexander, in his fifth season. I'm sure you'd like a few more wins to that record, but uh, based on our conversation, records don't mean much, and I say this all the time. No matter where you are, you're more than your records, you're more than your rankings. And that's going to be a point for the Zephyrs. White Bear Lake opting to let that serve go. And Cameron Peterson begins the game with an ace. Peterson plays well for the Zephyrs. Picked up her 10th ace. White Bear Lake answers on the kill. Peterson picking up her 10th ace. Keep an eye out for Peterson in the front line. She also likes to employ the setter dump. Leads the team in assists, but has 13 kills, 245 hit percentage. So number five might throw some setter dump tricks. That pass a little off the mark. White Bear Lake will get a free ball. We'll get names and numbers as we move along. An extended rally taking place here. Net ball is going to be won by White Bear Lake on the lift violation. So the first ball handling error of this game. Assessed to the Zephyrs. White Bear Lake, data limited, but one of the players to keep an eye on, Ellie Messerschmidt. 10 kills in 19 attacks against Spring Lake Park. But it's Matamidi who scores on the line shot, Katherine Arneson, and I spoke with Angela Helly. She said Arneson and Aaron Noel, the players to watch for the Zephyrs. They also are getting some back from injury. So the Zephyrs. Trying to get back to 500. There's a block for White Bear Lake, and that will fall for a point. Layla Guile and Abby Brugman involved in that one. And the Zephyrs take an early 3-2 lead. And as you know, it's an untimed sport. All that matters is being the first to 25, and you have to win by two. Service error against Emma Berglund. This is Sammy Steffens, one of the captains serving for the Bears. That serve receive went back into the White Bear Lake side. The Bears with the free ball. And scoring a point from the back row, I believe, was Steffens. My vantage point is partially obscured by the official, but he has to be where he is. Uh, his position is far more vital than mine. But Steffens lays a hit. And another serve, White Bear Lake had a chance there. Matamidi going with two touches on that last set, and that attack hits the net. White Bear Lake with the hitting error. Emma Berglund commits it. It looks like, though, when Steffens is on serve, that could create some opportunities. And she got Matamidi into a couple serve receives that went into the White Bear Lake side. So keep that in mind as we move along in this game. Kylie Gustafson, the sophomore. Lands the kill for the Bears. White Bear Lake in section four. That's a low serve, and that will end up being an ace, I believe, for Ali Schrader. So White Bear Lake looking to stymie Matamini with their service game. That was a low serve. This time, Gustafson or Schrader sends a boomer that Matavidi is unable to play. So 
So back-to-back -back points off the service game by Ali Schrader. Another tough play for Matamidi. White Bear Lake with a chance. Back to Matamidi. And that will go out of bounds, hitting air charge to Catherine Arneson. And White Bear Lake elongating their lead, eight to four. Scoring a few points in succession. Three with Schrader on serve. Sends a teardrop. And a hitting error charged to Kylie Gustafson. White Bear Lake picked up on the setter dump by Cameron Peterson, but hit that into the net. Any coach will tell you mistakes are gonna happen in the sport of volleyball, but with rally scoring, you can make up for it on the next play. So it's important to keep your focus, maintain your concentration, and not get too done on yourself when a miscue happens. White Bear Lake using the setter dump to perfection. Annika Olsen with the score. Olsen the junior, one of the three captains. Here's Bria Hill as the Bears hold a 9-5 lead in the first set. White Bear Lake jammed there, free ball for the Zephyrs. And they cash in. Emily Short gets credit for the score. Decent crowd on hand. Of course, a White Bear Lake Matamidi game always adds a little extra. The two schools frequently meet in sports outside of football. And that will fall for another Matamidi point. That was set up by a serve receive that went back into the Matamidi side. And White Bear Lake wasn't able to get the control they were looking for on their bumps. Unofficially, uh, Short will get credit for that. And Matamidi hands the ball back to White Bear Lake on the service error by Brugman. So Matamidi struggling a little bit in the service game. Here is Kaylee Geske. Oh, Matamidi right. goes right. And that off-speed hit barely got over the net. Matamidi will get another chance. This time they go left. And it will be a point for Matamidi and Emma Berglund. Although I believe White Bear Lake made contact with the net just before Berglund landed her hit. So that might hurt her kill numbers slightly. Big hit, that goes over to the White Bear Lake side. It almost hit the ceiling. But Matamidi comes up with the point. Emma Berglund, this time, without a doubt, scoring for the Zephyrs. That serve receive almost went over the rafters. Emily Short came up short on that serve. That's the third service error against the Zephyrs, and those points add up with Riley scoring. Here's Hannah Meyer. A low arcing serve, Berglund Hit that one a little too far. Matamidi hampered a little bit by miscues in the service game and the hitting game. Matamidi calling for a deflection. The officials say no. So Emma Berglund will be charged with the hitting error as her attack went just out of bounds. And Meyer serves that one out of bounds. 13-10. There's Angela Helly in her eighth season. Took a year off. In those eight years. 
as she started a family in that gap year, but then came back. And I think you can understand taking a year off when <laughs> you're starting a family, if you know what I'm talking about. White Bear Lake with the hitting error. And will be charged to Bria Hill. 13 to 11 now. Matamidi leaves that one short. Arneson in position, just missed time to hit. I'm noticing Cameron Peterson making several digs in that back row, providing Matamidi with a solid last line of defense, but she couldn't handle that serve. And that will be an ace for Kaylee Geske. Arneson wasn't in position for the attack. That gives White Bear Lake a free chance. And they convert on the opportunity. Bria Hill scores. That will be enough for Matamida to call the timeout. 16 to 11 is the score. And this is coming down to errors right now. White Bear Lake with a few hitting errors. But Matamida with three service errors. And there was a Super Bowl that just bounced in front of us. We're going to get a close-up view to the student sections here. I'm next to the Matamidi student section. White Bear Lake is to my right as you look at the Matamidi huddle. And a reminder that if you want to follow along and get up-to-the-minute information regarding and Winona and Jordan losing to Osseo and Rosemount, They'll continue Metro East play. They do have one more non-conference game, October 4th, and that is a home meet against St. Anthony. Service error on the Bears. And 17, or I should say 16 to 12 is the score. It's 16-12. And we're still in the first set. White Bear Lake goes up front, and Ellie Messerschmidt from the middle picks up the kill. That makes the score 17 12. This is Sammy Steffens. Low serve. That ball bouncing around the net. We play on. Steffens with the dig. There's Peterson. She's second on the team in digs, providing some defensive capabilities for the Zephyrs. There's another example. But White Bear Lake should get a good chance out of this one. And a good eye by Kylie Gustafson, letting that one sail out. 18 to 12. Serve received, oh, heads up play. Couple of them, but it's White Bear Lake who wins that scrum. Ellie Messerschmidt with the score. But Catherine Arneson made a heads up play to keep that point alive, at least momentarily. But the Bears with a seven point lead. And that served low from Sammy Steffens. Everything about even unofficially when you look at kills, errors, and the like, but White Bear Lake a little scrappier in this first set. And that will be a point for Abby Brugman as she was able to squeeze it into the holes from that block. 19-14, Zephyr still have one timeout left in this set. 
Right. White Bear Lake is trying to time themselves to a first set win. And Annika Olsen gets them one step closer. Here's Arneson. This time she scores. As Sammy Steffens wasn't able to make the play in the back row. Arneson rotates back to the service position. Peterson subbing out. As you know, with volleyball, rotations often have to do with matchups and positions, not so much about playing acumen. Blessing out of BC with our first hard hit of the game, and she is pumped. Her first kill, and she fired a no-doubter in the front row. White Bear Lake closing in on a set one win. Steffens with the up. White Bear Lake can't do much with that play. Set her dump by Ellie Mustar. And Matabidi will score off the air. Here's Maddie Noel. She and Aaron are twins, in case you're wondering. Cross-court shot lands for a point. Kylie Gustafson, the sophomore. One of the two young guns on the White Bear Lake roster, Kaylee Geske, an eighth grader. And Getting a score fixed. <laughs> the scoreboard briefly had White Bear Lake with 122, which is not possible, or I should say highly unlikely. Matamidi scores Emily Short with her third kill unofficially in the first set. You know, theoretically, it is possible to score 122 points in a set, but you would need an awful lot of extra points. Good serve indeed. I don't know if you heard the reaction behind me, but I think one of the parents said good serve, and it certainly was for Emily Short. White Bear Lake unable to play it. That short or that serve wasn't so good on the part of Short. But as we said before, mistakes do happen. I can't get too high or too low. White Bear Lake, though, two points away from cinching up a set one win. Low serve. And Layla Guile, a little displeased with herself, thought she had it. Timeout, Matamidi. Guile thought she had it. Her hit just went out of bounds, and White Bear Lake will have six set points to work with coming out of the timeout. Here's a look at Matamidi's recent games. We discussed the Farmington Invitational. As you know, volleyball teams take part in the weekend tournaments where you play condensed matches. And you see the North St. Paul result in there as well that first win over North St. Paul since 2015. Certainly a boost forward for the Matamidi program. Other wins include South St. Paul and Creighton Durham Hall. Six set points to work with for the Bears. Anna Meyer serves that into the net. Her second service error. And here comes Cameron Peterson.
Matabidi wins that net ball. And this is what you want. A little bit of momentum. Even if you don't get that set one win, it can carry over to later sets. If you can go on a run, make White Bear Lake flinch a little bit. Peterson's up, almost hit the ceiling. And White Bear Lake will take the first set off the hitting error from Emma Berglund. So, White Bear Lake with the advantage, hoping to pass along some tips and tricks, not just in volleyball, but elsewhere through your Stantall Volleyball Academy. So, Reagan, thanks for taking some time to join us. You'll be taking part in a seminar following this set. You noted that you started Stantall Volleyball right after you got out of college. When did you come up with the idea to begin a leadership academy? So I have my master's in youth development leadership, so it's always been on my mind on the ways that I can influence the youth, and I thought, why not use my platform as an athlete and use it in my sport? And we talked a little bit before the game. You said in volleyball there's so much more to it than making attacks up front, digs, all of those intangibles we discussed during the game, but there are a lot of lessons that can be imbued on these players beyond it. So what are some of the values that you try to teach through this academy? Absolutely. Uh, volleyball has given so many girls a community, and I really like to lean in that idea of it's allowing you a safe space to become the person that you want to be and learning who you as an individual want to be in a safe setting. So when you get to the workforce and you make that mistake, you aren't going to get fired right away. You already learned it through volleyball. And that's a crucial lesson. I've been missing this all the time. Well, we have an example. Mistakes will happen in rally scoring, but I think this sport teaches you you can shake it off because you can make up for it on the very next play, and you certainly can apply that approach in life as well. Absolutely. Volleyball is just a game of mistakes. <laughs> it is a game of mistakes. And there's a look at some of Reagan Pittman's accolades on that resume. I think we got most of them right. Hopefully. Oh, I believe so. No, we do our research here at SEC <laughs> as Matamidi ties White Bear Lake 2-2 in this first set. So tell us a little bit about your journey because I think for all of us, the pandemic created this detour. In your case, you got to finish your career, well, in the spring. Usually that's club season at the high school level, but because of the situation, you had to postpone the ending of your volleyball career. But that being said, what did you enjoy most about your time as a Division I college athlete? I enjoyed getting to know the athletes that I got to play with. So many of them are so inspiring and such strong young women. And I really look up to so many of them and I'm happy to call many of them my friends. Um, I also really enjoyed getting to meet the fans and how much energy and effort they give to us each set and game. So that's some of my favorites. What a rally happening here, right? I always love these extended rallies that is won by Ellie Messerschmidt because you really get to see the strategy play out. I think you're used to rallies maybe going one or two plays. Seconds, yeah. Right, 15 seconds, but when they get longer and then you start to see all those defensive ups and all of that, the intensity grows. So I love those extended rallies. Absolutely. <laughs> As a fan and as a player, I'm sure that can be nerve wracking because you're wondering what's going to happen next. That's a hitting air charge to White Bear Lake, but it creates a little more excitement. Excitement, you're right, <laughs> and a little more ingenuity as well. So, what were some of the lessons you picked up through volleyball that you think helped you start this leadership academy? Some big ones was definitely being who I am. You know when you got to put on spandex and a tight jersey and play in front of thousands and thousands of fans? You really have to get comfortable in who you are. Another lesson I definitely learned is how to be a leader, and that leadership is a lot hard, harder than people make it out to seem, make it out to be. So really making sure that I'm being the best for my team. So what goes into being an effective leader, not just in volleyball, but elsewhere. Because as you were telling me, you go to volleyball camps, schools, you've had some corporate engagements, and we have a reversal. Matamidi scored after an official's discussion, but what you're learning 
what you learned through your work in sports and what you're learning now away from it, it's a big world out there, but a lot of things do carry over, maybe more than what we might think of when we were watching games on BTN or ESPN. Absolutely. One of the big things is understanding that you're not gonna get along with all of your teammates, but if you respect them as an athlete and as a person, they'll be there. And I often find that carries over into like that coworker situation. You don't need to be friends in the office, but you definitely can be coworkers or teammates and be super respectful to that individual. Now your Stantall Volleyball Academy has officially been in operation for just a few months. But exactly, yep. What has excited you most so far, whether it was an engagement, uh, an opportunity to reach out to people. I know White Bear Lake got in touch with you and that's why you're here, but uh, what opportunities has Stan Tall Volleyball created for you? So many opportunities in so many different ways. I've received so much love from girls thanking me for what I'm doing and from parents too. It's just been such an honor to receive that feedback and weird point there, huh? <laughs> it was uh, a weird point. Receive feedback from the parents and just how much they love what I'm doing and just the support and the community that I've built around me of amazing, strong women and then men with that who support those strong women and stand behind them. It's been such a blessing for me to build that community and hopefully continue to build that community. One thing I've learned covering women's sports as long as I have, it's a tight-knit community. It may not be the biggest, but those who follow it do so almost religiously. And that makes for some fun, engaging conversations. What would you say was the biggest challenge as we have a hitting error, I believe? Yes. <laughs> on on Matamida. <laughs> We've had some interesting points play out in, the, in this conversation, but what was the biggest challenge after you decided to make that transition from athlete to citizen? Uh, finding a workout routine that I actually liked. <laughs> um, and then also still getting used to reckon getting recognized in public. <laughs> I was going to Costco today picking up mozzarella sticks, and this guy comes up and he goes, are you Reagan Pittman? And I was like, yeah. He goes, I love watching you. What are you doing now? And I got to talk about my business. So. That's definitely been some of the stuff that's carried over. You might have just had another client. Uh, maybe. <laughs> that maybe was your next client. Maybe. <laughs> but I can relate. I've had uh, folks recognize me from YouTube, and I always tense up a bit because I'm not used to that. I don't do this for myself. I love sharing stories. So <laughs> it's a little weird, but I take it as a token of appreciation that people respect what you did, and I'm sure they grew up watching you these last few years on BTN and ESPN. What goals do you have moving forward as you continue the first year of Stan Tall Volleyball? And how do you think that could lead into the next phase of your career as Blessing out of BC scores back-to-back -back kills? I would definitely love to do more of the leadership side. Um, I've done some volleyball clinics and lessons and I would like to speak to larger crowds such as one tonight. We got a pretty loud and excited crowd here. Um, but I definitely would love to go and do leadership and speak at bigger crowds and just impact as many young female athletes as I can in, in any sport, right? I want to be that person they look to when they're like, oh, this is the person who's helped. Sh well, we talked a little bit about the opportunities and the engagements you've taken part of, but what is the academy designed for in terms of leadership and beyond? The academy is designed to build strong females in the sport of volleyball, any sport really, build them in that sport and teach them how to properly build a community around them that's gonna last a lifetime. So that way they can come back and give back to the sport that they love for so many years and then build more strong females. And on top of that, you set up a scholarship fund as well called Earl's Helping Paws. So yes. what is that about? So Earl's Helping Paws, I have a 25 pound mini Australian Shepherd and he travels with me everywhere. Not tonight, unfortunately. And he travels with me everywhere. And he is kind of like my right hand man. He gives out scholarships to kids who can't afford camp or lessons or schools or companies that 
um, can't afford me to come in. He is a donation-based program, and you can find on the website, stantallvolleyball.com, how to donate to that. Not too many philanthropic dogs out there, Reagan. Uh, so <laughs> your, your dog girl, he's quite busy, it sounds like. He is extremely busy, very busy. <laughs> he loves it, though. And of course, you will be hosting a seminar after the conclusion of this set. And what excites you about getting a chance to check out some of these high schools? You know about the volleyball culture here in Minnesota. You played in front of sold out games at the PAV. We're back to that this year, of course. And the high school community, several broadcasts have reached millions of views on YouTube. This community eats up volleyball at an impressive rate. What do you enjoy most about your time here and what volleyball means to Minnesota? I have really loved getting to watch the girls that I worked with this summer at White Bear Lake play. And just to get them, just to see them use that leadership piece we talked about on the court, it's been so cool. And also number 11, she's been on fire every night except for that kill, but we'll, we'll dismiss it. No <laughs> one saw it, right? Um, just like really said, nope. getting to see them be a leader and use the words that I've told them in action. That's been my favorite part of tonight. As I was going to say, mistakes happen. So Absolutely. just get them on the next play. You don't worry about the number of mistakes you make. So as you get ready for that seminar, there are a couple of questions I'd like to throw at you that I ask of all my guests. Yes. What was your most exciting moment as a volleyball athlete and your most embarrassing? And by that, I mean a silly, not yeah. Yeah, like heroin, but something you look back on and you and you just think to yourself, how did that happen? One of my most exciting plays when, when it was, when was it? Uh, 2019, and it was the Sweet 16 against Creighton. And the setter set a two ball, and I just, I, I roofed it, and it was the game point in the fifth set, and we almost lost to them in three, and we came back, I think. I think we lost, almost lost in three, and we came back. And just getting that game winning block just really, and the support from the PAV just really gave me chills down my spine. And then one of my most embarrassing, this is a story I don't think I've told many people, but when I was a true freshman, my coach Laura, uh, Laura Casey was tossing me slides and I turned back and I swung at her and I broke and I gave her a black eye and I totally didn't mean to, but she came in with black eyes and glasses, and I definitely think that's one of my most embarrassing things from practice or anything. I got a lot of stories, but that's one of the highlights. <laughs> I think that's one of the great things about being an athlete, no matter what level. You probably have seen the memes as Sammy Steffen scores, whether it's D1, D2, D3, all the way down to JUCO, NAIA. If you play at the college level, celebrate it because it's an opportunity you won't forget and I hope your coach didn't hold that against you no. <laughs> with the black eye. She did not. I love that woman. She's taught me so much. <laughs> if anything I think she was probably appreciative that okay this she's got a mean swing <laughs> <laughs> and I've got proof. <laughs> I've got the receipts. <sighs> Time out. White Bear Lake on a big run here with Sammy Steffen scoring a couple points and another question I'd like to ask with everything you've experienced at this point, and you're- You can either reach me through stantallvolleyball.com. There's a little text box you can fill out, or you can send me an email at stantallvolleyball at gmail.com. Stantall Volleyball, and I believe it's Stantall Volleyball across social media. Absolutely, yes. Well, Reagan Pittman, thank you for joining us. I know we'll be broadcasting the seminar you will be hosting here shortly, but thanks for taking some time to explain about your organization, and I can't wait to see where this takes you. You've got to travel the country with your volleyball acumen and all the Final Fours, but I've got a feeling this next phase as you get to grow and evolve is going to bring its own sense of excitement, and I can't wait to hear about the successes that come your way. Thank you so much. Reagan Pittman, the former middle blocker at the University of Minnesota, she will be leading a seminar here shortly as soon as one of these teams gets to 25, White Bear Lake is hoping they're the first ones to do it. They have been on a roll in the second set. As we resume action, they lead 17-10. And 
leading the way. Folks like Ellie Messerschmidt, who throws down the block, but Blessing out of BC and Sammy Steffens have also recorded several points in succession. The Bears came in with the worst record, or the worst record of the two teams, but you wouldn't know it, and it goes back to what Mike Alexander was saying earlier. They're a super fun group. They don't hang their heads too low over a setback. They just plug away, and they're enjoying this. And after what happened a year ago where we had a limited season, that's a hitting error on Monomedi. Limited season, not a lot of chances to play, no state tournament. I think everyone is appreciative that they at least have a sense of normalcy here. So this White Bear Lake team is playing well. And on the flip side, Angela Helly had nothing but positive things to say about the Matamidi team as well. So both of these squads share that sense of unity and togetherness that sometimes is missing, even with top teams. As Reagan was noting, there's so much more to this sport than titles and wins. Yes, we talk about the Final Fours, the three-time all, the three All-American awards she won and many others as a member of a Big Ten school, but it can be a lot of pressure to manage too, and I th think it's great to see two teams, although White Bear Lake is probably having more fun right now. It's great to speak to the coaches. The student section is certainly having fun. White Bear Lake Certainly worthy of this performance thus far. They lead 21-10, now 21-11. Matamidi looking a little disorganized here. But, as Rickon was saying, her volleyball career included several comebacks, including a few from two sets down as Stefan serves that one into the net. So Matamidi not out of this yet. Until you win three sets, the game is not over. But the Zephyrs are going to have some work to do. And remember, they are bringing back some players from injury. So dealing with some adversity there. White Bear Lake scores on the cut. Bria Hill puts White Bear Lake two away from a set two win. And a reminder, we will carry Reagan Pittman's seminar live on SCC, so don't go anywhere when we go to the set break. I can't wait to hear what she has to say, and White Bear Lake hits that one into the net. And as she noted, and I can speak to this from my experience covering athletes, I wasn't one myself but it's always amusing when you run into people who recognize you for the work that you do. But it is cool to see that even after your playing days are done, as Adebisi hits that one a little too hard. It's cool to hear stories about the fans, the people who followed you all these years and still hold you in high regard. Twenty-three, thirteen. Matamidi on a run here, trying to build one anyway. Emily Short gets them one step closer, and it goes back to what we're saying: it's an untimed sport. So until someone gets to twenty-five, it's not over. And we talk about this all the time. Even if this doesn't result in a set win, it's the little things. You can take notes. You can use it to build up confidence, and just remind yourself that. Yeah, we belong here. In fact, Matamidi's run, as Emily Short scored again on the off-speed tap, is enough to get White Bear Lake to use one of their timeouts. Matamidi looked like they were in big trouble, and they still trail by eight with White Bear Lake two away, but Matamidi not going away. If you just joined us, this is a battle to take the lake. White Bear Lake, as you know, Matamidi and White Bear Lake on opposite sides of White Bear Lake. Matamidi on the front non-conference schedule. Stillwater in the mix as well, picking up their first conference win over Roseville. Stillwater expected to be a dark horse as 
Conference play continues in the Suburban East. Back to action here. Blessing out of BC scores again, and Reagan made note of number 11 and her terrific performance in the second set. And she's been responsible for four kills unofficially, and that was exactly the play White Bear Lake needed following the timeout. Nine set points to work with. And White Bear Lake closes out. Riley Gustafson rises, fires, and clinches set two in favor of the Bears. 25-15, so White Bear Lake one set away from a sweep over Matavidi, but the Zephyrs have shown glimpses. If they can string together a more consistent performance, get on an extended run or two, they can work their way back in this. So. With that, we will take another break, but told me before the game that she travels all over the country as we start the third set, and we have a net violation called on Matamidi. Ali Mustar got a little too close. And there's still people coming up taking photos with their that's something that may not go away for a while, especially for all these volleyball fans out here. And that's going to be another point for White Bear Lake on the double contact call. So Monomidai hitting a rough patch to start this second or third set. And if you didn't notice, Reagan Pittman has some vertical. She's significantly taller than me, although I'm used to that covering the WNBA for 10 years and covering high school sports, basketball, and volleyball for several years. 6'5 <laughs> is a listed height. I am not six feet. A little shorter than that, 5'11", but that's okay. Height is just a number. Emma Berglund with the hitting error for the Zephyrs, and the Bears are off to another quick start in this third set. And with a game like this against a couple of under-the-radar teams, you never know what will transpire. You look at the records and you wonder, maybe White Bear Lake will find themselves struggling tonight, but they are thriving. Sammy Steffens with the line shot that paints the back corner. And Mike Alexander highlighted Messerschmitt in that Spring Lake Park win. And the Bears clawing their way. <laughs> Pittman still picking people up. <laughs> There's Mike Alexander. I don't think you'll, I don't think he's looking to get picked up by Reagan Pittman. He's looking to pick up a win against a fellow Lake rival. That was an ace, by the way, from Annika Olsen on the last play. White Bear Lake has run smoothly, operating on all cylinders, 6 nothing in this third set. White Bear Lake going to the left side. Another fine play, Sammy Steffens with the finish. And the White Bear Lake student section chanting, we want Sammy. Well, that ball's coming our way and it's gonna bounce off into the bleachers. Hopefully someone will pick that up as the attack from Arneson was a little bit short. I was worried for a moment. I thought I'd have to retrieve it. Bears up 8-0. 9-0. Following a let serve. This is insane. I've seen runs, but not like this. Matamina using the first of their two timeouts in this third set as Angela Helly is trying to figure out how to get Matamidi back in rhythm. 
Here's another look at that last play. The serve receive. Okay, this was a prior play. This was Arneson's misfire. But that has been a microcosm of Matamidi in this third set, just struggling a little bit, and that can happen sometimes in the sport of volleyball. You get run into a game where nothing goes your way. You beat a team like North St. Paul. Here's the last play from Kaylee Geske, the eighth grader, in our super slow-mo. It was a let serve, and that threw Matamidi off just enough for Geske to score the point. Actually, that was Annika Olsen. Let's see what happens after the timeout as Monavidi tries to rally the troops. Here's Arneson. Diving up. What a beautiful hit. Olsen with a one-handed up. And it, Sammy Steffens finds the space in the back corner. 10-0. Another good serve by White Bear Lake. Should get a good attacking chance here. That didn't quite work out. Here comes Matamidi. They just gotta find something. Let's see if that awakens the offense. As Katherine Arneson scores the first point for the Zephyrs in this set. It's always fun, even though these two teams are in different conferences, it's always fun when these two get together. These two play each other in several sports. Basketball, soccer, volleyball resuming its rivalry series after taking a pause. Ellie Messerschmidt scores for White Bear Lake. They didn't play each other in 2019, 2020. They could not play each other due to pandemic protocols. Steffens with the diving dig, and that's going to pay off once again for White Bear Lake. Kylie Gustafson making the play up front. White Bear Lake playing some stellar defense in this third set. That's setting up some wonderful offensive plays. Here's Arneson. That's the second kill for Monomedi in this set. We change direction. As we've seen before, Matamidi can go on runs. And Kylie Gustafson put a little too much velocity on that hit, sending it out of bounds. The White Bear Lake answers quickly. Ellie Messerschmidt with a little bit of assist from the tape, but she still gets credit for the kill. The tape does not. Here's Ali Schrader. White Bear Lake up big. 13-3. And you're watching it live on SCC. That was a point from Adamidi. The official was on top of it. Emily Short using the one-handed tap. It hit the floor, the official was on top of it. White Bear Lake thought the play was still alive, but I heard the whistle and the signal. Monomina getting a few points here and a bit of a miscommunication on that attack from White Bear Lake. That opens the door for the Zephyrs. 
to storm their way in. Abby Brugman scoring. And this is what the Zephyrs need. Get a few points here, get a few points there. Work their way back. They still trail by eight, but they got on the board. They're putting together some rallies here. Setter dump by Matamidai is a little too far. Only Mustar with the hitting error. White Bear Lake. Looking to pick up another win in a season where they haven't had many yet. Brugman sends that one out of bounds. If you're curious, the last time these two teams met back in 2018, as that will be a point for Matamidi, no deflection. The Zephyrs beat White Bear Lake in four sets. One of them, 25-10, so lopsided scores, they can happen, and that is one of the many unpredictable things that make volleyball a sport to watch. You can have a neck-and-neck -neck battle in one set, another team can go on a big run, we, as we saw White Bear Lake do to start this third set. 10-0. Service error on Maddie Noel. It's unpredictable. In fact, Matamidai has dominated this series. Going back to the last 10 matchups. Kylie Lalek gets it off the face, I believe, of Geski, and it's hard to dig with your face. But that was a well-placed hit by Kylie Lalek to get Matamidai the point. And that will be an error on White Bear Lake. Adebisi had to retrieve the ball. Didn't get the best set for Monica Olsen. And that was a well-placed serve for the Zephyrs, and they're slowly inching their way back. It will be enough for White Bear Lake to call a timeout. As we said, though, with untimed sports, Runs can happen, and you don't know when or where. But how this game has played out might be a surprise when you go back to the season series. They met in 2018. They met three times in 2017. And just to show you that I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> here's a look. Matabidai has won all 10 of the previous meetings Now, teams can change from year to year. And when you haven't played each other in three years, you're going to look a little different. But historically, Matamidai has played well. But it's White Bear Lake coming out in force. But we've seen some surprising results. Matamidai in 3A, White Bear Lake in 4A. But the theme in 4A has been parity across the board. As we resume play, and that will be a hitting error, I believe, on Steffens as that did not cross the net. But we had an example of that earlier this week. Prior Lake, a team that was under 500, knocked off Minnetonka, a top 10 team in Class 4A. Champlin Park started the season outside the top 10 and opened the year with two big wins against top 10 teams in Lakeville North and Eastridge. So you just never know what will happen. White Bear Lake scoring that last point. Yeah. 
So most of these kids may not be familiar with the series history between the two as Hannah Meyer serves that one into the net. But if White Bear Lake is able to close out, what that would do for the group of seniors, and you've got the eighth grader in Kaylee Geske, what that could do to boost the morale. It was already up there, speaking with Mike Alexander, telling me about how White Bear Lake balances fun with hard play, as Ellie Messerschmidt demonstrates. But you beat a rival that you haven't defeated in a really long time. That means something. A win is a win is a win, as the saying goes. Lalek hits that one into the net. 19-12, both teams with one timeout remaining. And Matamidi answers back. Lily Chul with the score up the middle. Chul leads the team in hit percentage entering this game, 209, 55 kills, but up until that last play was kept in check. Abby Brugman, once again from Anamidai. Hitting from the outside. Here's Zoe Centers, who always has a joke, one of the jokesters for the Zephyrs that keeps things light on the east side of White Bear Lake. Bria Hill scoring again on the cross court shot. Here's Sammy Steffen serving. Led the team in kills and aces last year. And on cue, she picks up one. Timeout, Matamidi. Their final of the third set, White Bear Lake up 21-14, a few points away from a straight set sweep. And a win that could give this program a much needed boost. Here's another look at that. Let Ace. Looking ahead for the Bears. They've got plenty of other Suburban East teams awaiting them. Park of Cottage Grove and Roseville, a couple of road games, Creighton Durham Hall. Looking at the rest of the schedule, they've got some winnable matchups. Park of Cottage Grove and Creighton Durham Hall come to mind. So the Bears have a chance to get a couple more. And Steffens again won't get credit for the East, but she was responsible for that point. Stillwater and Woodbury Roseville could be a challenge, but we'll see. As I said, you never know what can happen. And we've seen some upsets at the higher levels. There's no reason to believe White Bear Lake couldn't do the same and pick up a few wins. That schedule, we should note, doesn't factor upcoming weekend tournaments because those games are not entered until they're completed since you don't really know who you're gonna play. But I do know this, White Bear Lake was rolling in this third set. Steffens picks up another ace. And the Bears are ready to hoist that surfboard trophy. 24-14. White Bear Lake picks up on the setter dump. Arneson to Brugman. Yeah. 
An extended rally playing out. Good hustle by White Bear Lake. Just couldn't quite catch up to the ball. And Matabidai extends the game for at least one more point. They trail 10-0 in this third set, and it's really tough to work your way back from that kind of deficit. But they have some more winnable games ahead of them, too, as Arneson throws down the block. It's been a long time since White Bear Lake has defeated Matamidi, but that drought is no more. It's a straight set win for the Bears. 25-20, 25-15, 25-16.